Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies. My name is John and this video is going to be my top 10 80s horror movies on 4K. But first I've got a couple of shout outs for you. The first shout out is to a new channel to me, it came up on my recommendations the other day and I, I sat and watched a couple of videos and I thought oh, this is really good and I really enjoyed the videos I saw. So this channel is 4K Jungle. Now this channel is run by Jamie and when I watched, when I saw it I put it on because it had uh, like the best looking 4Ks in this collection and I must admit I really agree with the, the video we put out. And also I looked at some of the other videos and I thought they were really entertaining, I thought they were very well done. So Jamie just seems to be starting out and I think that he's going to have a great channel. I think he's going to go places with his channel. He's got an excellent presentation as well. So I'm going to leave a link down to his channel down below and I urge you to go across and check it out because I had a really good time with it. So that's a shout out to Jamie and the channel 4K Jungle. Also on Saturday just gone I was a guest on the fantastic channel, the Movie Chair Podcast. Now AP Stevens who runs the channel, he got me on with a couple of guests on the Movie Chair Fest night. There was two of them. We were on the second one. There's like parts one and part two, nights one and night two. And what I'll do is I'll leave links down to those two videos down below. So I shared the stream with two great channels, Sean at Movie Media Madness and also Ryan at Let's Get Kicking Movies. I'll leave a link down to all that stuff down below. So I had a great time on the stream and I want to thank AP once again for inviting me on. So that's Movie Cheer Podcast. Okay, so on with the top 10. Now this top 10 has been compiled mainly on picture quality. With Get My OLED TV, I've been sort of looking through some movies and just testing them out and I've been finding out different qualities to them that's made me think differently about these movies. And I think the OLED can bring out the dark levels, the colours, it just looks sensational. So that's one of the reasons why I went and revisited some of these movies. And I thought, I'd done a previous one, I'd done a 70s, uh, best of 70s uh, 4Ks, so I'll leave a link down to that one down below. The, the sound quality on that was a little bit low and that was because I put my microphone on and for some reason it records this that's just talking in the computer really well. It records the other one quite low on a, when I do it on the editing software. So that's why I'm not doing it with this one and that and you won't get that dip in quality. Okay, so again with this top 10 I can recommend all of these movies. I think all of these movies are spectacular movies. I've enjoyed every single one of them. Some of them are my favourite movies of all time. And it was quite hard to separate a few of these ones as well because you've got that, that thing that you're getting some really, really solid transfers and maybe there might be like four and five. Uh, but I have been able to rank them fully. I didn't put any in tied place, although one of them kind of is tied. So it seems a shame to put any of these movies in bottom place. That's not taking anything away from them. These are all spectacular. But the way I've ranked them is purely on picture quality. If the picture quality, for whatever reason, is a little bit less, and I'll tell you, explain reasons why I think they are a little bit less, uh, that's why I put them a bit lower down. So at number 10, you've got the New York Ripper. Now, this is this looks spectacular. This is so good. Now, I think in the, my previous rankings of Blue Underground movies, I did have this one a bit lower down. I think I had House by the Cemetery above it, but House by the Cemetery didn't make the top 10 when I looked at me, me OLED. The reason why was uh, House by the Cemetery was a little bit grainy. It didn't take anything away from my enjoyment of the movie, but I found that this one just wasn't grainy at all. And maybe that might put somebody off. It doesn't put me off, but I noticed that this picture quality on here was a lot sharper. The colours on here are sensational. It's got a lot of traffic in it, and the cars, the, especially the New York taxis, they all look spectacular. I love looking at things like that. I don't know why cars and, and vehicles themselves look good in 4K, but they seem to. And this is this this movie just looks, and it's got Dolby Atmos as well. It's got a 4K DI. So Blue Underground, you can, you can think that everything that they do when it comes to 4Ks, you know you're going to get a spectacular release or the best release that you're going to ever get from that. Obviously fully uncut. The big question is, will this come out uncut in the UK? Because recently, the house on the edge of the park is going to come out on 4K. Now that's pretty much in the same, you know, ilk as this one. A lot of violence against women. So will it do it? I don't know. It's, but it's an interesting thing to, to check out. So number 10, that's 1982's The New York Ripper. So at number 9 is 1985's Demons. Now I've got Demons 2 here as well and I've got to say that Demons 2 is pretty much tied with Demons. That's why this is the one that I've tied with itself if you know what I mean. The quality on both of these movies is exceptional. It knocks the Blu-ray, the previous Blu-ray out of the park. There is no comparison whatsoever. It's like night and day. 
If you like this movie, you have not seen anything till you've seen this on 4K. I was so amazed by how different it was from the Blu-ray. I was hoping it was going to be better than the Blu-ray, because some of these ones, when you get that get remastered, and you think, well, it's not that much bigger from the Blu-ray. And I think that's because this one hadn't been remastered for such a long time. It was just a revelation to get this in the this, this 4K medium. Now, this movie, I think, I'm pretty sure it's on a 4K DI, but I couldn't find anything out to say that. And also it's a 5.1 surround, but it, that's not taking anything away from it. If I say someone's got Dolby Atmos and a, and a 5.1, I think this 5.1 suits this, this movie. But the, the black levels, obviously, in the cinema, they are just crazy, crazy black. And also, as well, the, the sharpness of the actual... Because I thought with this being a kind of low-budget Italian movie, it wouldn't have the sharpness there in the print. But it's really crystal clear and really crystal sharp. In fact, sometimes Demons 2 looks a little bit sharper. Although Demons 1 is by far the best movie. So I couldn't really split these, but I will say that if you want to buy one of them, I would say Demons is the best one for me. It's the best movie and it's the best looking movie. But highly, highly recommended, as these all are. And this this was a real revelation to get this from the Blu-ray, the previous Blu-ray, which was all right. And this one came out like it was like a, a different movie. So at number nine, with a nod to Demons 2, that's 1985's Demon and 1986's Demons 2. So coming in at number eight is 1981's An American Werewolf in London. Now, when I went back to these the OLED TV and I've re-watched these ones and I've sort of graded them, I found that some of them look different to what I thought they would look like. It's It's got to be the fact of the OLED TV with the dark levels, with the colours. It just makes these movies look different to me. And it brings them to life some, somewhat. I mean, they look great on my other TV, which is a 4K TV, but this just does OLED display does something special to them. And this one here was one that I thought would have been, like, I thought Demons would have been miles ahead of this one. But actually, if I'm honest, this one, does, to me, it always looked grainy. But on this on this TV, it doesn't look grainy to me anyway, with my settings. And don't, don't forget, this is just my personal opinion. And this movie here is on a 4K DI. It's got 5.1 surround sound, and it just looks spectacular. The dark levels are insane on it, especially when they're on the moors. The colours of the jackets is just unbelievable. So at number eight is 1981's An American Werewolf in London. Coming in at number seven is 1985's Phenomena, or Creepers, as it's known in this release. Now on this watch, with I watched the full version, and I also watched with the HDR, I was so amazed by this picture quality on here. The, the actual people's faces as well, the features are very good, but it's the black levels that stands out. The colours are good, don't get us wrong, but for some reason it just the, the black levels are the other star of the show. And it's great when you see a movie like that because it kind of made this movie kind of... Like, I saw it in a different light. I saw it in a more enjoyable light. I was really invested in this movie. And I found this is the first time I've really connected with, with uh, Phenomena. I haven't watched the Creepers cut yet, which is the shorter cut. And yeah, I mean, it's a 5.1 surround sound. It's a 4K DI. If you want something to show off some 80s horror to show off your black levels on your OLED display... Look no further. This is in, insane with the levels it is. So at number seven, that's 1985's Phenomena. At number six is 1982's Tenebrae. Now, this is a Dario Gento masterpiece. Now, this is a solid movie. This is one of the best Dario Gento movies you'll ever see. As with most of Dario Gento's movies, it's got real eye for filmmaking. This movie just looks spectacular. It's got some great camera angles, some great camera shots. So this was another great one to pick up because this one hadn't been remastered for a long time. So I was so glad to get this as the only version I own again. And uh, I thought it would look good, but this looked very good. And I think the star of this movie is the colours. The colours in here are just really, really just to stand out. The black levels are great as well because it's like quite a lot of darkness at the, the end of the movie. Dario Gento 4K is if they're done right, they just look amazing because basically... You've got a brilliant movie to start off with with a brilliant filmmaker and if you put them two together and you remaster this in the best possible way and present it in the best possible way you are seeing a real visual treat so number six that's 1982's tenebrae so at number five is 1985's cat's eye now when you see this you see this company here studio canal and you see this on a, on the front you know you're in for a treat now, this movie is a movie I haven't seen for years, and when I watched it, it was like watching the movie for the first time. I remember watching it and quite enjoying it, but I couldn't remember anything about it. I remember vague parts of the storylines, but when I've watched it now in full, this this movie is spectacular from start to finish. 
and I really, really enjoyed it. Now, this movie has got 5.1 surround sound, and it, it sounds great, and it looks great, and the, the emphasis on looks great. I thought this movie might look acceptable, you know, and just really good. But this, the quality of this movie here is just unreal. It's, it was such a revelation to watch this movie later. I couldn't believe how good this movie looked. It was one of those movies where I kept looking at it and thinking, am I seeing right? Am I seeing this level of detail in this movie? It, yeah, it's an older movie, but yeah, obviously all these movies are shot in 35mm, so you're going to get some good information from the print. And I was really, really surprised by the fact of how good this looked. But this is just such an exceptionally good-looking movie. And it sounds great. It's 5.1, but the 5.1 surround sounds excellent. And it's also because it's got it could have done with Atmos because of the, there's uh, one of the stories in here uh, concerning that bloke from Airplane. It's that good. It should have had all Dolby Atmos for what happens in it. But that's not taking anything away. I'm not taking anything away from these movies. I had such a blast with them. I'm so glad to see this. If you don't know about this movie or you want to check this movie out, you're a bit unsure about it, you're in for such a treat. So number five, that's 1985's Cat's Eye. So coming in at number four is 1988's They Live. Brand new restoration, Studio Canal, Match Made in Heaven. I will say this movie is a movie of two halves. The first half is more serious, the second is a bit more comedic, with some a bit more of a romp. Now I do struggle, I did str struggle with Carpenter when he's doing like comedy things or sort of things that weren't serious and weren't really horror. I did think he had to be, when I was young, I did think he had to do all horror, so I was wrong about that. Anyway, so getting back to this, when I watched it, this movie was, it, it was exceptional. On the OLED, it was just, I thought this would have been a bit lower down, but I watched it on there, that's just the colours, the colours are something else. Now, I said this before, I don't know what John Carpenter does with his movies, but he's one of these visionary movie makers, a bit like Dario Argento, when he's got this sort of eye for when he puts a movie out that always looks spectacular, no matter what he does to it, he always seems to have this this just look, this carpenter look, and that that is usually pin sharp, and the colours are just these on these four Ks, the colours of the John Carpenter movies are really coming to the forefront, which you don't really see, and also the black levels on this one is just it's just really unbelievable. It's a 5.1 surround sound, but when I saw it was coming out in Studio Canal, and I knew the others ones they looked that good, I thought I'm going to have to give this have to give this a shot, another shot. I'm so glad I did. I want to give a shout out to Cinema Axeman. Leave a link down to his channel down below, because he, with his review of this, I thought, well, you know what it is? It sounded that good when he reviewed it. I thought I've got to give this another shot. I'm so glad I did. So, and it's amazing that it's come up this high on the on the movies. I thought this had been a bit lower down, and this shows you how good these movies are. If those movies look that good you will know that this one if you've got any of those movies below you will know this will look better if you're sitting on the fence with it or you're a bit like me you think i'm not gonna give it a chance i urge you to go and check this one out i really enjoyed it this time round, as i did with big trouble little china i'm more you know at one with the fact that john carpenter sometimes doesn't make horror movies so you know that was me it was my, my fault of my youth so coming in at number four that's 1988's they live so into the top three now and at number three is 1982's the thing. Now this one does look like a studio canal release, but it's not a universal release. That was a bit. I thought that Arrow would have done a 4K of this, or even Studio Canal, but they didn't. It was left out Universal, and I was thinking, will it do a good job? Because sometimes when Universal gets on the, the Blu-rays of the thing, it wasn't that good for me. Arrow was much better. But anyway, this movie looks. It's always looked good to me, but I wanted something that looked truly spectacular, as I thought it could look on 4K. Now, for me, this movie just looks unreal. The black levels, the colours, the, the fact of this, the whiteness of the snow, the detail in the people, the detail in the special effects. I've never seen anything like it. The sound in here is Dolby Atmos, and I think it needed to be Dolby Atmos for all the things going on. It's got all these weird sound effects, which just are just amazing. And I think this movie is well one of Carpenter's best movies ever. And again, it's a John Carpenter movie, so it looks spectacular anyway. He's got that, it's got that look to it. I honestly thought that this one would be number one, but the fact there's two more above this is just unbelievable. But that just shows you, when I've revisited these movies, I had an initial theory of what they would look like, and they've all sus surpassed that. And that being said, that the two in front of it have surpassed what I originally thought of these movies, and that's not taking anything away from these movies at all. You will have a blast with any of these movies. So at number three, that's 1982's The Thing. So coming in at number two is 1982's Halloween 3. 
Now, what I did was, because there is obviously Halloween 2, 4 and 5 can be in the 80s horror movies, I thought rather than put, they would have all made this top 10. And rather than put them all in and being a kind of dominated by Halloween movies, I've decided to pick the best of them, which is Halloween 3. Now, I would have definitely had 2, 4 and 5 in the top 10 because it all looks spectacular. And if you want to know what the best 2, 4 and 5 are, it's the Scream Factory ones. They've done such an amazing job on it. It's unreal. But for me, Halloween 3, out of those lot, looks the best. And it's mainly down to the colours. The colours on here are the best colours of all the movies that the Halloween movies for me. This movie is just, as everybody knows, that I had no time for this movie whatsoever. But Keith from Euphoria Pictures, link there's channel down below. He said to me, he sent me the Blu-ray and said, you've got to see this movie. So I put all my problems to one side with the fact that Michael Myers is not in this movie. And I had an absolute blast with this movie. I can't wait to watch this movie again on Halloween. Now this has got Dolby Atmos as well. It, look, it sounds spectacular. The dark levels in here are, are great, obviously. But it's the colours for me that, that set this apart. I honestly thought that this would be in the top 10. I didn't think it would be this high. I definitely thought the thing would be over this. But it's not. Uh, it's just... I can't, I've had to rank these as honest as I can. And this this one surprised me how good this movie was when I put them all like back to back and played them all, you know, and went through all the scenes. And I just think that this movie is such a revelation. It's another one of these ones where you, I've never seen this one at all, really, since the cinema, which I was uh, disgusted with, with the fact of no Michael Myers, but never mind, we're going to leave that one alone. So at number two, that's 1982's Halloween 3. So this top 10 has had some movies that have had some startling transformations when they've been presented in 4K. And to be honest, I knew this one would have been in the top 10, but I never thought this one would have been number one. So this is a surprise to you, it was also a surprise to me. So number one is 1980's Alligator. Now, when I put this on, I thought, yeah, I would have ranked this myself around about the five mark. I would have thought that The Thing, Halloween 3, possibly, and maybe even uh, Demons would have been above this. But wow, this this is the first time I watched it on the on the fork on the OLED display, and it's it's like nothing you will ever see. It's so sharp. I mean, for 1980, you would imagine this would have limitations, but you think this movie, apart from the way they're dressed, would have been shot yesterday. The dark levels in this, because a lot of it takes place in the sewers, is amazing. The colours in the sewers are amazing. The colours everywhere are amazing. They just it's just so unbelievably you know well done this is from scream factory again so scream factory when they, they do the 4ks they do a really decent job surprisingly enough to me and maybe surprising enough to you that alligator just just for the reasons i've talked about the fact of the colors the dark levels they just seem to be that and the sharpness of the people the features the skin texture the, the clothing everything of this is one of those ones where you put it on and if you know this film and you know how sort of ropey it's looked in the past you would not believe that this thing would be possible to get this thing looking like that. So I'm so glad I checked these movies out again on my new TV. And don't forget to check those channels out I mentioned down below. So thanks for watching. You take care. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.